So we're now going to shift focus and talk about um, on the networking side of Riverbed's portfolio and out at the edges of the distributed enterprise, you know, what's happening there. We're going to be covering a number of topics. First, to introduce the team, we've got a number of uh, heavy hitters that are here today. Um, Kevin Glavin and Shashi Marugu are, will be coming up and talking through um, a few areas. They are technical directors uh, within the Steelhead Research and Development Team. We have Kenny Kwan and Crystal Lee, who are senior product marketing uh, engineers and managers out of the Steelhead team. We have Scott Wilson, uh, who is here, um, and he is uh, a director out of our Advanced Technology Group. And I'm Josh Dobies, and I run product marketing and strategy for both Steelhead and Steel Fusion. Um, we're really excited to have this event, and thank you very much for making the journey. I know it's been uh, a, a busy day for you, hitting a number of places along the way. We're excited because this is the first time that Riverbed is going to be talking in a public forum about our point of view on what's going on with SD-WAN. It is an emerging category. Um, we believe it's important, and we're going to be sharing with you how we view this um, and what we're going to be doing to help uh, uh, our customers and enterprises move towards a more agile place, and it's the first time we're doing that. So we want to thank uh, Network Field Day for giving us this opportunity. We're going to be going into uh, deep detail on two aspects of the hybrid enterprise. We're going to talk about cloud applications and how we have architected a global SaaS performance platform and some of the intricacies that are involved in doing that. We're going to be doing a deep dive today on video, right, and the uh, um, um, the uh, large increase of bandwidth the, that uh, customers are demanding in their environment and answer sort of a wacky question which is what does video, what does a web proxy, and what does hybrid WAN path selection all have in common? Um, and there's some interesting insights that we wanted to share with you about the way that we view this problem and how a lot of these pieces um, are required to bring together truly a software-defined uh, application delivery frame framework for the real world. And then lastly, we're going to reveal to you uh, for the first time um, what new platforms we're going to be bringing out next year in support of an overarching vision that Riverbed has for redefining not just the way WANs work, but actually how branches, remote sites work uh, holistically. Um, because we think that we're in a unique position to really dis help disrupt not just the networking piece, but also IT all the way out at the edge. So if we start with the first piece, you know, WAN optimization and SD-WAN, um, this is obviously a beautiful picture. This is the, the planet Pluto um, that we just got to get a picture of, and um, I just, it's, it's just awesome that we were able to do this. The guy that discovered Pluto back in 1930, his daughter's still alive, and, um, and I'm blanking on his name here in, in, in live real time, but the, the whale and heart is named after him. And it's, uh, it's just amazing that we've been able to do this. So this is um, sort of an analogy that, you know, we've been embarking within our, our ecosystem and solar system of WAN op optimization. And, and if you think, it's also an analogy for enterprises where if our solar system is sort of the on-premises world and things are moving into the cloud and beyond, um, that's sort of a, a picture of the way that we're viewing things. It wasn't that long ago that um, the WAN used to look very simple. Right? A lot of things were on premises, branches connecting to data centers over private networks. And the name of the game here was around minimizing the cost of those expensive MPLS um, um, uh, architectures. It was about accelerating applications right? so that over any amount of distance, you didn't have to suffer end user productivity and business productivity. And the third thing was about helping enterprises consolidate infrastructure that was at the edge into the data center. And really, it's that third one that was always the beginning of Riverbed's approach to having a conversation with customers. WAN optimization as a, as a term was, was quite appropriate to frame our technology at the time in the early days. But we were always about trying to make the WAN really disappear and become irrelevant, right? So that in this increasingly distributed world, IT architects could rethink, do I want to put servers everywhere in my organization and data and backup? What if really the end state of IT architecture is one where all of IT is really existing in the core, in the data center or a cloud. Meanwhile, business can continue to operate at the edge with complete agility and not a lot of operational complexity. And so that was always our vision. The first step was to optimize some application protocols that allow people to do just that. So here's what's emerging that's causing this whole uh, disruption, hybrid WANs, SD-WANs. Three really key things. Number one, cloud applications are becoming more prevalent. Number two, 
increased demand for bandwidth, insatiable demand for bandwidth, and the thing that's driving that the most is video and rich media. And then number three is that all of the applications that businesses use are increasingly encrypted. And that becomes a real problem when you're trying to determine what are the applications, right? Because you lose your visibility, and if you don't have visibility, you can't have control. You don't know how to treat these applications. The other thing I want to mention about these three things is that these, are, these come out of a pa paper that Gartner wrote um, uh, last month as well as end of last year. Uh, there's a paper called A Technology Overview of SD-WAN, and the WAN is the new LAN. Um, and so it's telling for us, because when we are approaching this SD-WAN story, we're starting here. We're starting at these core problems that people are facing today, and we're trying to design a system that starts at the application and then eventually gets us all the way down into the packet layer, and we're trying to rethink how the networking needs to support the application out at the edge in support of these higher level challenges and problems. And so this is what's emerged. The hybrid WAN has emerged. This is sort of a, a, a perfect um, architecture that blends in the best of internet connectivity with uh, redundant MPLS connectivity uh, so that you can make the best choice of where applications are going to be delivered, whether on their cloud or in the data center. And the problem is, this is beautiful, right? This is a great architecture, but it's, it's hard to get this right. And so here's a bold statement that we're going to make today. One is, we just, you know, the future of the WAN is not based on traditional routing technology. That's what SD-WANs are all about. And I know you guys are on the bleeding edge of this. Um, and in fact, I found this quote on the internet. And Ooh. if it's on the internet, it must be true. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I cannot believe anything that guy says. if it's on the internet, it must be true. And it's even it's even more true. It's even more true because this is actually the top organic search engine optimized hit when you search for SD WAN. Ethan, you got to work on SD no dash WAN uh, still. Um, but it's even d triply true because obviously it was. It that was in network bang. computing. I blame my editor. <laughs> <laughs> So we, we thought it captured it quite well. I mean, there's a reality to the fact that it's hard to be, stay agile in this complex world. And, you know, as Ethan said, though it's possible to configure routers to do this sort of hybrid WAN manually using technologies like dynamic multipoint VPN, Cisco performance routing, PFR, and real-time quality measurements, the resulting configuration is complex. And even with such a WAN implementation, it's unlikely that the initial implement deployment will not be the final one. As application profiles change, WAN router configures need to, configurations need to be changed to accommodate the current traffic mix. I don't think we could have said any better. So thank you very much, Ethan, for setting us on a course uh, for what you know, is really driving our R&D team here. I'll send you a bill. Send, send us a bill. Thank you very much. <laughs> so this is where this disruption of SD-WAN is, is, is trying to come to the rescue, right? How can we embrace this complexity? and at the same time make things operationally easier. You see lots of definitions emerging, the typical themes of agility, you know, simplified, uh, lower cost, et cetera. You know, for us, when we think about it, when we've talked with customers, a lot of this was emerging as, as applications were becoming increasingly hybridized. That caused networks to become hybridized, right? And what's emerged is this SD-WAN that really um, has the potential to redefine not just these hybrid WANs, but how even traditional WANs are working in the first place with, say, you know, dual MPLS into your, into your completely private network, right? So we've solved some harder problems, and it's making our older problems even easier. And so this is what we've been building, really. This is what we've been up to, right? Over the last couple of few years, we've been talking to customers, and this is the picture that we put up uh, when we asked them, you know, are you adopting more cloud? And even in the early days, as we had the first instances of the Steelhead <coughs> SaaS uh, performance offering, you know, a lot of this was still emerging, but it really is kind of reaching a, a hockey stick here. And so in support of these emerging use cases, we started adding new solutions into our portfolio. Uh, Obviously, WAN optimization, but, but the ability to identify applications, whether or not they are encrypted, right, in a secure way. The ability to group those applications into, into groups that are meaningful to the business so that that can become an anchor for policies that are written more in the language of English or business or, you know, whichever language you're doing business in. Network QoS, right, path selection secure transport and web proxy. Web proxy we're going to take a minute to go into in some detail today, one of the last entrants into native capabilities uh, on the, in the steelhead itself. And so again, our approach has been, as we've been talking to customers and we're trying to rethink what's this architecture, is 
starting with trying to come up with a policy language that's in the language of business. It's about applications. It's about sites. Where are you? Right? It's about the users themselves. It's about the services that they need. Right? And so that's been our beginning of the design principle. We almost started with saying, what do we want the end user to be able to type in or click around in a UI? And it has to be in this language. Then the next step is to create a transparent and seamless integration and overlay network that can exist and coexist with, tra with traditional networks today, as complex as they may be. Right, as deep into the network as you may be placing these devices to, to, to push applications uh, with agility and, and consistency, right? asymmetric routing, et cetera. Right? Um, and this is something that's always been part of, of the Steelhead philosophy, to be auto-discovering each other, make it very easy and seamlessly integrated, and then build the plumbing within, within the systems, the layers of innovation, so that that higher level language can immediately translate into what should happen with these lower level networking services. One simple example is what we delivered end of last year. With Steelhead 9.0, we introduced the concept of application groups to make it easy to create policies. We also introduced secure transport as a native capability within Steelhead. So now, not just being able to encrypt the traffic that the Steelhead was optimizing, but all traffic that was flowing through, possibly even just getting treated with path selection or QoS, and that's a single click. That's not a separate system, you know, such as, say, DMVPN that you need to configure and manage and maintain. It's literally just one click to have a secure, complete, full mesh of connectivity. And so it's very natural. So this is the first time that in a public forum anybody is seeing the words Riverbed and SD-WAN next to each other. Uh, before, just now, we've been sort of in the Riverbed hybrid WAN world, and I guess that, you know, it's a little bit of a graduation. So, <laughs> um, But it's what we've been working on, right? And so it's been very natural. Uh, it's been no surprise to us to see a term emerge. We think SD-WAN is a great term to describe the needs of the businesses there today. And so for us, yes, it's software defined, but it's also business defined in the language of apps. It must be optimized. It must be secure. We've been thinking about these hybrid networks by design, not just for kind of rip and replace, but plugging into the, uh, the networks that exist today. As you heard earlier, complete visibility. Right? So with these points of presence all over these edge locations and probes all the way down into the data center, having the ability through, say, Steel Central Portal to really have a view of what's going on from when somebody clicks the mouse all the way down into the disk. And, and, and at the end of the day, making sure that all applications simply work, whether they're on premises or in the cloud. And so that's our Riverbed SD-WAN solution. We've been working with um, uh, groups in this area, the ONUG, we were there uh, in spring. And so it was no surprise to us that uh, we, we passed uh, their grade grading scale to be accepted in this community. Um, um, and, uh, and of course, a word on, uh, so this is an emerging area, right? There's, uh, if, you, if you look at Gartner's definition, Gartner says that if you are an SD-WAN player, uh, you must, in addition to all of these things, you must be able to replace a branch router. Right? They are fully on board that this is a disruptive movement. Right? Um, we don't check that box today with the current steelhead, but we are going to be talking about our view and our vision in, in making that happen. We believe that that is the right answer. If you solve the right problems, and the key is, for us, it's starting from the top down, it's from applications and business down, then the, the, the logical conclusion at the end of the day is, that, is if that's the overlay thing that's creating agility in the business, why not do the last piece and eliminate the need for the connectivity plane at the back end? And so that is part of our vision. We're going to talk about that with you today. And so after all, this is, this is what we're focused on.